Um, as usual, I'd like to just remind everyone to please put your request to ask a question on the chat panel and we'll take it from there. Who would like to go first? Thank you, Stu. Oh, thanks, Supergosi. Hello. Hello, Kyle. Um, just just um, wondering, as a start, um, you know, how much confidence did you draw from what you did in that second test in New Zealand and, and use it to kind of transfer into what you are required to do in the, in the ODI side? Uh, sorry, I just want to see if you can hear me. Yeah, I think it's on now. Yeah, yeah, I got um, you. Cool, sorry. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, when you score runs at, at international level, I think any format, um, it gives you a bit of confidence. So, um, yeah, I think especially with the, the 100 in New Zealand, it gave me a lot of confidence. Um, like I said, it uh, didn't matter what format was going to come up next. I think it was always going to give me a bit of confidence. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was really happy with that. And I feel like I'm in a, a bit more comfortable now at international level. Uh, I think that 100 has done wonders just for, um, you know, that self-belief, just to believe that you can you can play at this level. And, yeah, I feel like at the moment I'm in a good space and I, I feel pretty comfortable at this level. So, yeah, it was definitely a massive uh, confidence boost uh, um, getting those runs in the, the last test. Thank you. Heinz? Hi, Kyle. Thanks for your time. Um, Kyle, obviously the second ODI... Sorry, um, was undoubtedly a, t a team effort. I mean, particularly in the batting batting department and stuff. But there's been so much so much debate, you know, from the more cynical um, sections of the of the South African cricket public regarding you know the IPL participation of some of your leading stars. And um, but I mean, you had a guy like Puletsi Museki who said, you know, these guys, even though they're going to the IPL, they are still extremely dedicated and extremely patriotic. And it must be really. Um, um, inspiring for guys like you as well to see how how guys like um, KG and you know Quinny take the lead in a victory like they did at the Wanderers. Yeah, I think um, from my obviously I can only speak from a personal point of view, but I don't think there's ever been any question um, over the guys' commitment to the pro tiers. I think um, obviously the IPL is at a at a uh, period where they're going to miss some international cricket, but. Um, I fully believe, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same feeling around the camp, that these guys are fully committed to playing for their country. And I don't think there's ever been a question whether their mind's sort of in a different space or anything like that. So, yeah, I, like I said, I've always felt that those guys are fully committed to what's in front of them and playing playing for their country. Um, which are the way they they both performed, um, those two guys in particular in the last ODI was, was really good. And I think it just showed... Um, it just shows that even though obviously the IPL is around the corner and they, they are going to be missing some international cricket, it just shows that their, their full focus at the moment is on this series and, and making sure that we um, we win this ODI series. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think their, their commitment has ever come into question at all. Telford and then Ken. How's it, Kyle? Um, we, we saw you keep wicket on Friday and, of course, on Sunday. You weren't keeping wicket. And I, I'm just interested to know, how does that change your focus, you know, more mentally, I suppose. Do you get a better idea of the pitch, for instance, if you keep in wicket? Or, you know, is it a, is it a, a difficult transition to make between the two roles? Um, I think, obviously, when, you, when you're when keeping wicket, uh, you spend a lot of time closer to the pitch and you sort of, yeah, get a good view of what the pitch is doing. So from that point of view, I think uh, maybe you get a better understanding of, of what to expect um, if you're batting second and you've kept wicket. But... Um, yeah, for me, fielding and keeping, it's not too too different. I think maybe when you in the field, you sometimes um, have that luxury of sort of um, you see what, what the opposition batters are doing. Um, and in the field, you maybe have a bit of time to sort of think about how you're going to go about it when you step out there. Where I think sometimes when you keeping wicket, your focus is you, you sort of 100% focused um, on catching the ball behind the stumps and, and being in the zone for every ball that you maybe don't get that same luxury to sort of plan ahead and, and um, try and think about how you're going to play when you when you step out to the middle. So um, for me, I, I've, I've enjoyed that um, when I have fielded in ODI cricket, I felt it's maybe, you know, I don't know, like I said, it's just allowed me that luxury to just think about uh, what I'm going to do when I go out and bat a bit more than if I was keeping. But yeah, I've, I've enjoyed playing both roles. Um, for me, I'm, I'm quite happy to do either. Um, yeah, just, just happy to be playing, to be honest. Ken? Thanks, Sir Psy, Kyle. Uh, congratulations on your uh, half century at the Wanderers. Uh, Thank just you. Kind of 
following up from that last question, um, KG said that it was still a bit of a mystery after the Wanderers game, why in the first ODI you guys struggled to take wickets. Now, um, you kept wickets uh, at Centurion, so as you just said, you had a very good view of what was going on. Do you have any explanation for like the difference between the first ODI and the second ODI? Um, you know, the, the, the penetration is very different. Uh, yeah, I think KG did, I um, might be mistaken, I think he did also touch on it. But from my side, I think in that first 10 overs, um, I think probably we bowled better at Centurion, to be honest with you. It was just a case of um, them batting really well. And yeah, where at the Wanderers, there were a couple of, you know, leading edges that went to hand. I think at Centurion, there were maybe one or two plays and misses, one or two RBW shots that were a bit higher, whatever. So um, for that first 10 over period, I, I don't think... Um, we changed anything going into the Wanderers game. I think we actually bowled really well at, at Centurion. Um, and then, yeah, with any form of cricket, if there's a partnership, wickets become become tougher. So, yeah, with that that opening partnership in the first uh, first ODI at Centurion, they got a good partnership going. And I think, um, yeah, then it became really difficult for us to take wickets. So, yeah, I wouldn't put it uh, pin it down to anything in particular. Like I said, I think we bowled, bowled really well in, in both games. It just was one of those days where, you know, the good ball goes past the bat as opposed to taking the edge and so on. Just just one of those things. Um, Stuart? Oh, thanks, Super Kazi. Kyle, just on your on your sort of own role within the one-day side, um, where, where, where do you see that at the moment? I mean, there's a sense that you may, you may be in competition with a couple of other guys, but where do you see yourself in, in, in the South African one-day side and, and what are going to be the requirements from you, other than just to keep scoring runs, to cement your spot, you know, looking ahead to some big things that might be on the horizon, well, will, will be on the horizon in a year's time? Yeah, I think, I mean... I don't want to say I'm in a tricky situation, but I, but I think with the, the batting lineup that we have at the moment, it is quite difficult to sort of get a, a fixed position and sort of cement a spot. Um, so yeah, for myself at the moment, it's just about um, being adaptable and making sure that I can I can bat in any uh, any particular position, which I think in this series I've sort of shown that. Um, it's just about being ready that if there's an opportunity in the middle order that I'm ready for that. If there's an opportunity up at the top, um, I'm ready for that. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I sort of I understand that our, our batting lineup is, is really strong. And for me, it's just it's going to be a, just about um, being adaptable and wherever there's an opportunity, making sure I take advantage of that. Um, yeah, I think obviously you saw in the, the last game going in with, with just five bowlers can sometimes um, prove costly. And I think, yeah, with the batting lineup that we have, if we do need to play a sixth bowler, um, I'm probably the guy that, that more often than not will miss out, which... I understand. So um, for me, it's just about um, being aware of that and understanding that situation and, and knowing that opportunities might be limited at this stage, but it's just important to make sure that I'm, I'm ready for whatever, whatever opportunity there is. And finally, Kyle, we've got a question from EWN who aren't able to use the mic function. Um, has the team had any in-depth conversations around the precarious position that we are in, in terms of automatic qualification for the ODI World Cup? Um, I wouldn't say we've had in-depth conversations about it, but everyone is aware of the standings and where we are and the importance of um, getting that autom automatic qualification. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not something that we've spent a massive amount of time um, discussing or anything like that. For us, it's just important about um, taking each game as it comes and making sure that we're in the best place possible for, for the game that's ahead of us. Um, I believe if we do that, uh, we still got a lot of games ahead. If we do do that, um, I'm confident we'll, we'll get the points we need to qualify. Um, so yeah, there hasn't been massive discussions, but everyone in the camp is aware of the situation and, and we know what we need to do. And on that note, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we'll chat to you tomorrow at the post-match uh, press conference. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Carl.